folks, we are back. It's the Info Warrior with Jason Burmis, and I am now joined with a woman who really needs no introduction if you've listened to this program or the Alex Jones program. Uh, she, in my opinion, is one of the preeminent experts on geoengineering from all separate levels. I mean, the documentation that she has in her home is just unbelievable. Like I said, she gave me over 7,500 PDF files. On top of that, there were just countless photographs, countless videos, uh, you know, countless DVDs that were burned. She spoke in front of the United Nations and so much more. We're actually going to be going over some of these uh, flight documents that we made copies of while we were down there. Uh, Rosalind, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you for having me on your show this evening. Oh, no problem. Now, one of the big subjects uh, that we're going to want to talk to you about are these upcoming naval drills. But first, why don't you just tell people just really briefly how you got into this and, and why you think it's so important? Well, the United States Navy has, de has decided to expand its warfare testing program. And they're going to um, expand uh, the Northwest Range program, which is Idaho, uh, Northern California, Oregon, and Washington. And they're going to, it's a five year warfare testing program. And it, I have great concerns about this program because what they want to do is use the Pacific Ocean as um, a bomb site for underwater detonations, um, warfare games. Uh, they want to use high frequency and mid range frequency sonar, which will impact marine mammals. And over five years, they're asking for a permit to actually harm or kill 11.7 million marine mammals over five years. And I got involved on February 17th of this year when I first learned about this project. And since that time, I've been campaigning to uh, for congressional hearings and also for uh, postponement of the project until such time as the public really can uh, be notified properly about this program and have a chance to express their opinions. Well, let's get something clear. I mean, 11.7 million marine uh, animals, that's a lot, but they'll probably even go beyond that if they get their way. That's what the permit they're asking for is, but how are they actually going to count that? They'll fudge the numbers, and then my suspicion is that they'll do even more damage to the environment. I mean, that's their M.O. Um, yes, it is, and the Navy has not necessarily been a good neighbor in places where they have done warfare testing before, and so I suspect that the that's just an estimate of the number of marine mammals that would be harmed during the program. Um, the Navy's only real mitigation measure is to have somebody uh, stand up on one of the ships and look for marine mammals and then say, well, if we see one, why, we're going to stop the program. And if that was true, then they wouldn't be harming any and they wouldn't need a permit. So I don't believe that they're going to stop a multi-million, billion-dollar program just to save one marine mammal. And you can't see them. Congressman Thompson said that they could only see the larger marine mammals maybe 9% of the time. So the rest of the time, they're going to have somebody looking for mammals who won't be there. And they're also going to be impacting uh, fish because they won't see the small salmon that we're trying to save in Northern California and Oregon and Washington. Um, they won't see them leaving um, the streams and the rivers to go into the ocean for their migration patterns. They can't see them. So when they do the underwater explosions and the detonations, they're not going to be, uh, they're going to be impacting all species. When we get back from the other side of this next break, I want to talk about not only the ecological impact, but the economical impact of the region. I mean, this is obviously going to hurt fishermen. This is going to hurt local economies that depend on the ocean. It's yeah. the Info Warrior with Jason Burmes. We'll come back right after this with Rosalind Peterson. The Navy drills and much more. Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. We are back to the 
four with Jason Vermis. CaliforniaSkyWatch.com is Rosalind Peterson's website. Uh, but we're really not talking about the persistent jet contrails just yet. We've got her for a full two hours. We're talking about these upcoming naval drills, which are openly, they're getting a permit for 11.7 million deaths of marine mammals. And that doesn't even count the uh, fish. What is going to be the ecological and economic impact if this goes through? Well, Congressman Thompson and Congressman Waxman have said that it would negatively impact all of the coastal communities. And um, because they're already testing in the Hawaiian Islands, they're already testing in Washington, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Atlantic. And many of these programs went, went in without anybody, the public or anyone, knowing about these programs and how many marine mammals would be extended, expended I'm sorry, in those areas. Now they're going to try and take this 11.7 million over five years here, which is going to devastate the fishing industry. Uh, it's going to devastate the, the tourism for whaling and, you know, ships that go out and people that, that want to watch, whale watch and do other things. The devastation could be tremendous. And we're talking about hellfire missiles, bomb blasts. Uh, we're talking about mid-range and high-frequency sonar. We're talking about toxic chemicals. They're even talking about using white and red phosphorus, which are banned by the Geneva Convention because they're so highly toxic to marine life as well as humans who might come in contact with the substance because it can just burn you and will continue to burn you if it gets on your skin until all oxygen from the site is removed. So um, people who have been exposed in warfare situations, they were just burned right to the bone. So it's, it's devastating chemicals, mercury, lead, um, depleted uranium, um, arsenic um, are a few of just the several hundred toxic chemicals that they're going to be using, some airborne, some will be um, bomb blasts above the uh, ocean so that whatever chemicals there are will scatter into the air and move inland. There's going to be underwater detonations, and all of this will wipe out, um, all, you know, all sea life wherever the bomb blasts occur, whether they're on the floor of the ocean or whether they're, um, in other words, commuting through and, and um, you know, going from one uh, part of the ocean to another on their migration patterns. And they're going to impact fish. They're going to be impacting uh, turtles. Um, everything. And so the, the devastation from these exercises could be tremendous. Now, how far off the coastline are they actually going to be? I mean, where are they saying that these drills are going to be taking place? These drills are going to be taking place um, over land because Idaho is involved. Um, and then over land in Washington, um, Oregon, there will be flights over California. And then it's going to be from shoreline testing in some areas and along inland areas as well as out 250 nautical miles from the coastline to 250 nautical miles. I mean, this is just unbelievable to me that they're going to be putting arsenic, mercury, uh, depleted uranium, and all sorts of other goodies in the water supply. And 250 miles isn't that far away, in my opinion, number one. And number two, like you said, it's going to really eviscerate the fishing industry, and the consumers are going to have to take on that brunt as well because we're going to be paying even more for those kind of goods. Or you won't have them, or some of the chemicals will bioaccumulate like mercury into the food chain. And uh, the the bigger fish will eat the smaller ones, and so even now you have to re restrict your intake of tuna. So a lot of the marine, you know, a lot of the fish that you would now eat could also be contaminated from the program as well. And the Navy has really no intention of cleaning up um, all of the, the all of the stuff that they're using and blowing up. They're just going to leave it on the bottom of the ocean, and they're going to let the counties pay for. Any cleanup if they happen to wash on shore. So the Navy just says, well, because it's such a pristine area and it's undisturbed, why then it'll spread out so much that no one will notice. Well, of course we're going to notice because you're going to have all kinds of, of detonations and bomb blasts and things exploding and blowing up. And they're going to make underwater um, kind of like sites where they can practice uh, marine warfare, uh, submarine warfare probably. I'm 
sorry, submarine warfare. So um, I don't think that this is going to be benign in the environment, and I don't think that the mitigation measures that have so far been discussed by the Navy um, are enough to mitigate this particular situation. Well, how are you combating this, and how can people out there help? Well, one thing is that the Navy, um, uh, in other words, feels that it can just do this as, like they are a dictatorship, and they can just decide, and that public input doesn't mean much to them. So one of the things we have to do is contact our elected officials. We have to begin to say, look, we want congressional hearing. We want to um, learn more about this project, and we want to right away start to um, push for um, a postponement of this until the public has a chance to weigh in and until there are hearings. And um, um, Senator Carl Levin uh, would be the one to um, have a hearing on this, and we can approach Senator Levin about holding hearings about these proposals by the Navy.